Hey, hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Getting thirsty, I'm about to. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. We got a beer here from Brewed and Can in Washington, D.C. by D.C. Brow Brewing, LLC. This is their Corruption, which is their IPA. It's got a big picture of, of the Capitol building in green. Dave sent this to me, so thanks Dave for sending this. They, I'm here in Virginia, in Southwest Virginia, and they, and they do not send these beers down here, so they must have a pretty small distribution area. Uh, I, I think he is up in Pennsylvania somewhere, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, so they must be sending them north instead of south. So, uh, Not had this one. This comes in at 6.5% ABV, so we're right on the border of line there from being an Imperial IPA. Uh, Commercial description on this beer, it says, The corruption is our take of an India Pale Ale IPA. We will corrupt your palate with dangerously drinkable malts as well as assertive piney and citrusy hop aromatics, letting some alcohol and sugar sneak through. The crimson copper color with, uh, with a nose filled with plenty of citrus fruits can help but bring you down to our level. This is one shady deal that you won't be able to pass up. Well, imagine that. Uh, don't think there's anything else there we need to discuss, so let's go over to the food pairings, the food pairings, so this is an IPA, so your typical cuisine is going to be your curried and Thai food, uh, the cheeses are peppery, Monterey, pepper jack, sharp, blue, cheddar, your more pungent cheeses, stronger cheeses, gorgonzola, limburger, and the meat is poultry, fish, shellfish, and salmon, and I will add, I like uh, just about everything off of the grill uh, with the, an IPA, a pale ale and an IPA, burgers, chops, steaks, dogs, uh, anything off the grill. Um, that usually has a stronger grill taste, so, uh, but I know a lot of people that have pizza with this, uh, I mean, whatever you like to eat with it, uh, just be aware that if you're having a light dish, a uh, salad, or, or maybe even some kind of pasta, it may overpower it, so, depends on what kind of sauce you're using, I would imagine, so, guys, I don't think there's anything else in the food pairings I'm going to talk about, the glassware today, pint, Becker, Stein, and Nonic, the Tumbler, the Mug, the Sidell, I've got the pint glass, and this beer, since it is an IPA, even though it's a 6.5-er, it is not recommended for extended cellaring, so, with that being said, let's get this thing open and get it into the glass, Dave, thanks again for sending this one down to me, not had anything from these guys in DC, so let's see what this one is about. And when I got the beer mail package from Dave, I looked on the can, I think, and I didn't see anything on the bottom. They usually put it on the bottom, and this can is blank on the bottom. So that would be my suggestion to them: is get a dating machine for their IPAs, because you're never going to know how long this thing's been sitting in a can. Not good. Not good at all. <laughs> Alright guys, it's a very tangerine color, a deep copper color like it said in the commercial description. A lot of bubbles streaming up from the bottom of it, so it looks fairly well carbonated. We got us a good finger and a half head on that pour. Let's get a nose on it. Got a very nice smell, very grapefruity, citrusy, just like it said in the commercial description. From what I read, they use, uh, says here, Corruption IPA is their uh, take on a Pacific Northwest IPA brewed with Pale Two Row, C10, Honey, and Victory Malts. Exclusively hopped with 40 pounds of Columbus hop per brew to ring in at 80 IBUs, which is a fairly bitter uh, beer. Not the most, now I mean their IPAs and uh, double IPAs are well over 100. 
The corruption comes in at 6.5, like I told you. And it straddles the line between an IP and Imperial, like I told you. It has a supportive multi-backbone with an assertive hot presence that smacks your mouth with dank, resinous, and bitterness, followed by a pleasant aroma of pine sap and burnt spruce. It's got a wonderful nose on it. I am getting the pine and grapefruit and citrus. And there is a little maltiness to go with that. Well, let's see how balanced it is. Cheers, everybody. Let's give it a taste. Thanks, Dave. Cheers, buddy. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very pleasant. Not overly bitter for 80 IBUs. Citrusy. Pine. I'm getting spruce needles. There is a nice maltiness there. Very nice. Oh man, that is really nice. Oh yeah. This is going to go good with some burgers or something. Matter of fact, I think the, the other half just fired the grill up. We're going to Go out there and throw some burgers on before it gets dark. Just wash the trucks down, got all that salt off. I guess we're ready for the next round sometime this coming week. Well, very pleasant, very nice. Uh, right out of the fridge, 40 degrees, guys. I mean, let her taste it. Go out there and throw some burgers on while I'm sipping on this. Wow, nice. Nice pininess and grapefruitiness to this. Very pleasant. All right, guys, I'll be right back. We'll do the final chug. Stick around. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little bit left here. Oh, this is nice. This is really nice. It has such a, a nice, piney, citrusy taste. A little bit of grapefruit in there. And, and you get a big, malty, bready, biscuity taste to go with it. So, pretty nice. Uh, this is very enjoyable. Uh, very well made beer as far as I'm concerned. Let's see the final chug here. Wow. Very nice. If I could get this, I would drink I would drink I would drink this. I would definitely buy this if I could get my hands on it. Very nice. I like that I like that biscuity, malty, bready taste to go with. The citrusy, grapefruity, piney taste, uh, very nice, very, uh, a, a nice meld of both uh, the uh, the hops and the malt in this beer. Very tasty. Guys, the only thing I can fuss about, of course, and you know me, it doesn't have a date on it. So, I personally think this is a 9 out of 10 beer, but since it does not have the date on the bottom of the can, it's going to get the 8. 8 minus is what I'm going to put this beer at today. Uh, and, and they may do some kind of dating on the six pack somewhere, or I don't know how is it, whether, you know, uh, on the case or whatever, but it needs to be on each individual can. Uh, uh, that's just the way I am, that's the way I roll. So uh, if you're making an IPA, you got to have a date on it if you're going to get the best grade you can. So that's where I'm going to put it. Eight is what it gets today. Let's see what everybody else thinks. We'll go over to Beer Advocate first, and they say 88. Very good. I agree, it is a very good beer. I think those numbers are a tad low, uh, but you know, that I, if I was to put a grade on it, I would put it 91, so we're not off too far there, just a couple of points. Let's go over to Rate Beer. Rate Beer is a little more generous. Rate Beer says 96 overall and 93 in the style. If it had a date on it, I would be somewhere between 94 and 97 as far as a numeric grade on this one. Pretty tasty. I enjoyed this one quite a bit. Like I said, I would buy it if I could get my hands on it if it had a date on it. Now, if it doesn't have a date on it, I'm going to let it sit on the shelf. All right, guys, that's what I think about this beer. If you've had this particular one, uh, give me some comments back. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, like I said, I don't know what the distribution is and how far out it goes from D.C., uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty enjoyable. So my suggestion is to then put some dates on your cans. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Hit that like button, rate, comment, subscribe, and let's go see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.